Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to talk to you about Salatul Tarawih. A Tarawih prayers is a special prayer that is only to be prayed in the nights of Ramadan. And it is not prayed in any other month of the year. And this is a sunnah that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established during his lifetime. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed at Tarawih for a few nights in congregation. And then he stopped and he abandoned that in congregation because he feared that it might become obligatory upon Ummat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and perhaps they will not be able to commit to it. Nonetheless, the companions radiyallahu anhum continued to pray at Tarawih individually throughout the lifetime of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after his death during the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu and then during the Khilafah of Umar radiyallahu anhu in the first part they still prayed it individually until the second half of the Khilafah of Umar radiyallahu anhu he gathered the people because he saw them everyone's praying by himself in the masjid and it didn't seem to be like a good sight everyone was raising his voice and it became loud in the masjid so Umar radiyallahu anhu re-established this sunnah in his time and he gathered all the people under one Imam Ubay ibn Ka'b radiyallahu anhu. And the believers have been praying Salat al-Taraweeh during Ramadan ever since that time up until this day. Walillahi alhamd. Salat al-Taraweeh is considered a part of Qiyam al-Layl. So it is from the night prayers. And it is highly recommended, especially in Ramadan. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned something great and grand about its virtue, he said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, anyone who prays the nights of Ramadan, meaning at tarawih anyone who prays the nights of Ramadan out of faith, believing in this salat, and seeking the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal, all his past sins will be forgiven. Allahu Akbar. This is a huge, grand gift that Allah Azza wa Jal gives the believers. Brothers and sisters in Islam, concerning where to pray this salat, in the masjid or at home, really it is a sunnah and it is up to you. If you find that you are lazy, you haven't memorized much Quran, and you will not be motivated to pray it at home and you might skip it and miss it, then for you, it is best to pray it in the masjid. Go to your local masjid and pray, pray behind the imam, whatever he prays and finish with the imam. Whoever prays with the imam until the imam finishes as salat also with al-witr, then he earns the reward of praying the entire night. Allahu Akbar. Even though he will not be praying the entire night. So you'll be sleeping for the rest of that night and Allah will be recording for you as though you are standing up and praying. And if you find energy in yourself and strength in yourself and you have memorized a lot of Quran and you want to pray it at home, then that is also good for you and you're able to pray it at home. The main thing is don't miss it and pray it every single night. And the same thing goes for the woman. If a woman feels like praying it in the masjid will strengthen her iman among sisters, and uh, develops a lot more khushu'a in the masjid behind the imam listening to the recitation, then that is best for her to do so. And if a woman was to feel more khushu'a in her house and she's able to pray at home and not become lazy from this salat, then it is better for her to pray in her house. And there is no issue concerning this matter. The main thing is that we pray this prayer in the nights of Ramadan and not miss out on a single night. And whoever has an excuse, such as a woman that has her cycle, her monthly cycle and so on, then there is no need to worry. Allah Azza wa Jal, bi'ithnillah, will record for her the reward of establishing the night prayer in Ramadan because this is a situation that she did not bring upon herself. Rather, this came to her naturally. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to reward us all. There is, of course, always a debate. Is it eight, eight rak'at? Is it 20 rak'at? Is it more than that? Is it less than this? Brothers and sisters in Islam, there is no need for this entire discussion. If we looked into the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Aisha radiallahu anha told us that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not pray more than 11 rak'at a night. 
And so this was the night prayer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that doesn't mean that a person cannot pray more than that. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, when he made the guideline for the night prayer, he said, Salatul layli mathna mathna. He said the night prayer is to be prayed in twos, two by two by two by two, and you can pray as much as you want. Umar radiallahu anhu prayed 20 rak'at, and those that came after him prayed even more, up to 38, 40 rak'at, and so on. There is no issue concerning this, as long as you just spend some of the night in salat, that's the main matter. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed 11, meaning he prayed four, then four, then three, and that was al-witr. So ulama rahimahumullah, they say, you can pray at four. You can pray at four, just like we pray Salat al-Dhuhr or Salat al-Asr, you'll pray four rak'at, meaning when you do two, you make a tahiyat, then you get up for another two, and then you make taslim. And there are other opinions as well, that four means two, two, and then two, and then two. That's eight rak'at altogether. And that would be the better way to perform Salat al-Layl. Perform this Salat al taraweeh After you've finished eight rak'at, you get up and you pray three al-Witr. And this Witr, you pray it two rak'at and you conclude that. And then you get up and you pray one rak'at and you conclude that. Or you could pray three rak'at all together with no tashahud until the end. So you pray one rak'at, two rak'at, then the third rak'at. And then you make tashahud and you conclude as-salat and that is your Witr. And those who pray 20 rak'at, then 20 rak'at would be at taraweeh would be the night prayer. And then one rak'ah after this would be al-witr. This is according to some of our scholars. Brothers and sisters in Islam, salat al-layl or this prayer, salat al-witr, uh, one of the main matters and one of the purposes of this prayer is the recitation of the Qur'an. That's one of the grand purposes of why al-witr was legislated. So that the heart can connect with the word of Allah Azza wa Jal in the best position. The best position you will ever be in in life is when you are standing praying. That's the best position. And from there, you are reading the best of word, and that is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Salat al taraweeh the main purpose of it is to engage with the Qur'an. And so, open your ears and listen to what the Imam is reciting of the Qur'an. And also, of course, I know يعني, in these contemporary times, this day and age that we live, many of our youth are far away from the Qur'an and the meanings of the Qur'an. So the question is, is it allowed to carry a translation of the Qur'an while the Imam is reciting and following in that? Brothers and sisters in Islam, al-ulama, rahimahumullah, they mention that it is fine to do so, so long as you do not move your tongue and read. So if you're holding a translation of the Qur'an, don't move your tongue and read the translation. If you do this in Salat, your Salat is invalid because you recited other than the Qur'an. And this is a problem. Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah mentioned this matter. With Sheikh Ibn Baz rahimahullah, he also mentioned this matter. So what, mean, what that means is if you're holding a translation from the phone, you can hold your phone, you can hold the Qur'an translation, you just look at it. You look and you ponder. Don't move your tongue and read what you are seeing. If that's the case, then it is fine to carry that translation of the Qur'an and follow through with the Imam so that your heart can connect with the meanings of this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the end of Salat al-Witr, there is of course al-Qunut. We make this Qunut with the Imam. We say Ameen when he makes the dua or if you're praying at home. Make a simple dua for yourself. You can make this dua. If you know the Arabic language, then you only do it in the Arabic language. If you don't, you can make dua in the English language or in your language until you learn the Arabic language. That's it. That's something very brief about Salat al-Taraweeh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, commit to this prayer. Pray it every night. 